In today's video, I show you what vegetable oils do to the gut by showing you the first ever clinical trial to investigate the effects of different proportions of dietary fat intake on gut microbiota, fecal metabolic profiles, and plasma inflammatory factors in healthy young adults. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool test and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So over the last 10 years, there has been a lot of research on fat content and different types of fats and their impacts on the microbiome and overall gut health. We are now, however, getting a steady flow of data that indicates that consuming vegetable oils can significantly alter the gut microbiome and fecal metabolic profiles, which in turn can increase the risk around things like cardiometabolic risk factors. In the last five years, there have been some very good systematic reviews and meta-analysis of controlled trials, which have clearly demonstrated that when young, healthy adults were fed a lower fat, higher carbohydrate diet, they experienced less weight gain and increases in waist circumference. Up until recently though, little evidence existed on vegetable oils and their impact on the microbiome and a person's overall gut health. Much of the existing literature on humans was observational in nature, where cause and effect wasn't proven, and there was only a few clinical trials on very short-term dietary interventions. On top of this, the trials that were done tended to look at older and elderly patients who were not in their prime, so it was more challenging to control many of the necessary variables. Now, this video is not going to be a review of the literature. What it will be is a quick overview of a recent interesting six-month clinical trial that was published in the BMJ. This trial is very good because it took a group of healthy young adults and then compared a number of attributes of gut microbiomes as well as markers of inflammation for diets differing in fat and carbohydrates. Essentially, 217 healthy adults who were screened and shown to be clear of metabolic issues and diseases were then randomized to one of three diets, so high, medium and low fat. The main oil used was soybean, as this oil is the most widely used oil in Asia where the trial was carried out. Other vegetable oils were also used. DNA sequencing of their microbiomes were then carried out, as well as a barrage of blood and metabolic testing. Six months later, the participants finished the trials, and this is what the researchers found. So all groups lost weight, but those in the low-fat group lost significantly more weight than those in the high-fat group. In addition, waist circumference reduction and improvements in lipid profiles in inflammatory markers were shown to be significantly lower in the lower fat group. In terms of the impacts of the dietary interventions on the gut flora, the researchers found that although the three dietary groups did not induce major changes of the global gut microbiota composition, the higher fat diets had overall unfavorable effects on several important biomarkers, and I will get to these shortly. The researchers also found that those who followed the low fat diet had higher amounts of butyrate producing bacteria. Butyrate helps fuel the gut lining, it helps prevent gut inflammation, and it helps reduce intestinal permeability and leaky gut. It was also seen that those in the high fat group had a significant reduction and alteration in their short chain fatty acid profiles. Short chain fatty acids have many important functions in the body. They can affect the production of energy in certain vitamins, as well as playing a fairly significant role in the production of certain neurotransmitters, such as GABA and dopamine. The high fat group also had significant increases in fecal concentrations of palmitic and stearic acid. Palmitic and stearic acid, which are the main saturated fatty acids found in foods and tissues, are associated with the stimulation of inflammatory signaling in macrophages, adipocytes, and also myocytes. Now, the study showed many interesting impacts of high fat diets on the gut. Many different blood markers and fecal metabolites were measured, and many showed a strong negative impact of vegetable oils on the gut. Now, some of you might say, well, the study used soybean oil, and all vegetable oils have different compositions in fatty acids, and indeed, you would be correct. But while there may be some differences in polyunsaturated and saturated fatty acids between vegetable oils, a commonality that vegetable oils share 
is their oxidative stability or their lack of it at times. Oxidation of oil is an undesirable series of chemical reactions involving oxygen that degrades the quality of an oil. Oxidation eventually produces rancidity in oil. The process of oxidation can't be stopped, but in some manufacturing processes, it can be reduced. But be under no illusion, while there are only subtle differences between the composition of fatty acids between vegetable oils, they are all susceptible to oxidation, and it's probably a combination of this and the impacts of fatty acids on the microbiota that are causing unwanted reactions in the gut. So let me just read you the study conclusion. In summary, compared with a lower fat diet, long-term consumption of a higher fat diet appears to be undesirable, owing to changes in the gut microbiota, fecal metabolic profiles and pro-inflammatory factors for healthy young adults whose diet is in transition from a traditionally consumed lower fat, higher carbohydrate diet to one characterized by an appreciably higher fat content. These findings might also have relevance in developed countries in which fat intake is already high. Now in this video, I haven't even discussed other areas of fats that we know are problematic, such as lipopolysaccharides and endotoxins that vegetable oils can cause the release of in the gut. These endotoxins when released in the body can be extremely inflammatory. Now, I want to finally say that this isn't a fat phobic video. Low fat diets can be extremely destructive on the body. Obviously, additional studies are needed on vegetable oils and their impacts in the body. But you may want to consider vegetable oils in your diet when eaten in higher amounts. Maybe try and consume your fats in whole foods as nature probably intended. Most people would probably acknowledge that when you isolate sugars and drink them in fruit juices, they are not particularly good for you. But somehow fats are apparently different. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.